A quick, um, we got lots of good questions here. So a quick follow up on this. Uh, do those in heaven know the day and hour of his return? Now they're in heaven like Jesus. Um, Two theories on that. First, how time works in heaven. And secondly, what Jesus meant by especially in Acts 1, it's not for you to know the things which the Father has put in his own authority. Right. Uh, first of all, when we're talking about people in heaven having perfected knowledge, we're not saying they now know everything. Uh, omniscience and perfect are two different things. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we're talking about the theory, um, the idea of them being able to know the day or the hour would be appropriate if you have the view of heaven that it's on an entirely different timeline than us, that we're all in a sense regardless of whether it's at the end of the tribulation at the time of the rapture or at the time of uh, say for example Cain getting murdered by or Abel being murdered by Cain all are entering into eternity from the earthly timeline now that gets into A and B theories of space, matter, and time, how they interact with each other. It's not worth talking about. If you ask, we can maybe tie it into the Bible somehow, but the point of emphasis is the only way that would be appropriate is if we're all entering into that, leaving this world and everything that it will involve behind. We'll have total knowledge of the events of human history, but it be entering into something else entirely. Not biblical, it's a theory. Note that. The second issue is, okay, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 notes that when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Then it notes describing the perfected state, being perfected in knowledge, no. love. love. Right. I will know just as I am known. And that's the point. That's what will be perfected in us. So when people are asking, you know, what does perfect knowledge look like? The best, I think, biblical illustration of it, first of all, was Jesus, but also of Adam before the fall. They limited themselves from certain things because they didn't know life apart from a relationship with God. They were simple in terms of evil, but wise concerning things that pertain to God. Uh, he was competent enough to not only manage, but speciate and identify the differences between the entire animal kingdom. I'd say he had a purpose in that, and he knew botany, he could tend a garden. But as far as what we need to know and what we won't know and what we could know, it's all going to tie into our relationship with God. We'll have access to all knowledge, the one who knows all things. But for us to then say, oh, uh, well, I'm in heaven now, God, can you tell me the day or the hour? And that's what brings us to the third point. <laughs> The reason why Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels of heaven, not even the Son, but the Father only. There's two opinions people have as far as knows, meaning it's not in their right to reveal or it's not in their pay grade to comprehend. Mm -hmm. Now, since Jesus is identified after his resurrection by the Apostle Peter in John chapter 21, rightly, as saying, Lord, you know all things, right. and before mm -hmm his resurrection, where at the Last Supper he says, Lord, you know all things. We know you know all things. Now you speak to us plainly, noting right. that point. He's identified both before and after his resurrection as being omniscient, or a divine trait, by the way. But that's the whole point of emphasis, is did Jesus not know those things? Well, note after the resurrection in Acts chapter 1, where they said, will you now restore to us the kingdom? And Jesus said, it's not for you. Right. to know what the Father's put in his own me, authority. But for you. And that's the point. Yeah. If Jesus knew all things, that would include those things, but he was here to reveal certain things. It's the same reason why, for example, Jesus didn't demonstrate a miracle on record of someone, say, regenerating a limb. The things that he did were put in his authority. Why? To reveal the glory of the Father, not just to show off every possible alteration or intrusion on the laws of nature, right? right? So when Jesus was revealing truth, he wasn't showing off. He was doing things intentionally. When Jesus was performing miracles, he wasn't showing off. He was doing things intentionally. When Jesus withheld information, it's because it was in conflict with that common theme, that this was not relevant right. to his earthly ministry. So when that knowledge was withheld from us, ultimately, as we read in Acts, it was also the reason why Jesus withheld, this is the second theory, the knowledge from himself in his human nature. In his divine nature, he was omniscient. In his human nature, they believe he was limited from what he didn't need to know, just like with Adam being limited from evil. Not because he couldn't know, he learned really quickly when he ate the tree. Mm. 
or the fruit from the tree. Yeah. But it would be weird if he ate the bark on the tree, <laughs> but who knows what we're up to at this point. On the other hand, Jesus being withheld from knowledge or just withholding knowledge because it was fitting the Father's purposes or not, that's the difference. Now, both theories are valid because neither are necessarily in direct conflict with Scripture. They have weight. But the point of emphasis is when we're asked in the heavenly state, do they then know the day or the hour? Well, once again, it's not going to be relevant to us, so why speculate? Why waste time on a topic that doesn't have a meaningful or useful answer.